Welcome back. It's been over a year since I last released a video. I've been focusing on other stuff and uh, getting inspiration back to making videos. And uh, I have a few projects lined up, but I'm starting out with a two-part series of how to make your own old hammer battlefield. You know, like the old uh, green grass stepped hill uh, battlefields from the White Wars from the 80s and 90s and the uh, Warhammer Fantasy Battle Rulebooks, like 3rd to 6th edition. So I'm gonna make uh, a lot of train pieces and a whole gaming board for that. So I hope you'll enjoy this. To make a board like this, you need a lot of supplies. I tend to pick up stuff whenever I go to the hardware store or a hobby shop uh, that I think I can use in projects like these, but to start off, you need some inspiration. Uh, I had these old uh, How to Make War Games Train books from Games Workshop. Uh, they are great. Uh, brushes, uh, glues and paints and an old battle map that I bought second hand. Uh, I had some gravel and bark and 3D printed buildings that we can use as train pieces. Also 3mm MDF board as basis for all the train pieces. An old welcome mat from Ikea, a doormat, uh, more 3D printed stuff and uh, here I got flock and static grass of different kinds uh, and some plaster rocks that I cast myself, some hedges, and trees of different kinds, old and new, and some tools. So let's get started. The first thing I did was just glue uh, a lot of PVA glue. I just uh, poured it all over a, a big chipboard uh, that is uh, three by four foot uh, in size, and I just poured a, a whole tub of glue on and brushed it out with an old paintbrush that I'm not too uh, fussy about. I asked my wife to help me spread out the gaming mat because this is hopeless if you're doing it yourself uh, just get folded and you want it really flat and nice for the terrain pieces I sketched out all the baseboards uh, I'm gonna make a small farm a river with a bridge a field and a lot of forests also I'm making a, an old wizard's tower on a hill here as you can see I sketched out the size of the small hill and uh, what you do is just cut out these uh, boards. I use an, an electrical saw, it's just so much faster and, uh, and uh, yeah, you just save a lot of time. So if you have access to electrical tools, use them. Uh, or if you have the spare money, buy them. And they are essential when you're making a lot of terrain like I do. I like the terrain pieces to have beveled edges. So I sand them down to about a 45 degree angle with a uh, an electrical sander, uh, just to make them blend more into the battlefield. For the ruined wizard tower hill, I sketched out uh, the shape I wanted uh, on a piece of 5 centimeter thick uh, insulation board made out of polystyrene. And I used a hot wire cutter to cut it out. Uh, it's a fun tool, uh, both for getting rough shapes and to uh, cut the styrofoam into uh, whatever you want. Uh, this is a handheld one uh, that's great for doing stuff like this. I also have a, a table mount one for making more accurate square cuts. And uh, just keep chipping away on the hill until I liked it and uh, getting a natural uh, hill shape. Uh, and making sure that the tower on top had, had some room to stand on. So. I sketched that out and made sure I didn't cut there. Uh, for the hill I used some plaster rocks that I cast from molds I got from a train uh, hobby shop. Uh, they're really good. Casting plaster takes like 20 minutes and it's uh, it looks really good and it's easy to glue down with a hot glue gun. Um, just uh, make sure you place them where you want them because the glue dries in seconds. Uh, but just try to make uh, a rocky landscape that you like here, uh, getting a nice texture and don't worry if there are gaps because you're gonna fill this up later on. And uh, I just keep putting pieces of rock here until I get uh, a look that I like and uh, also 
gluing down the tower uh, so that it stays in place. This is going to be painted uh, in mostly the same color so I don't worry too much about gluing the, the house down, the tower down at this stage. The same rock molds were used to create some scattered terrain pieces. Uh, in fields you can often see these rock formations, either nature created them or farmers put rocks uh, that they found in, in the fields into big piles just to get rid of them. And usually they start growing trees and bushes and uh, they were a really nice addition to a battlefield uh, to create these field-like uh, views. And I just glued them down with a hot glue gun. Uh, the welcome mat was cut into a nice piece to create a wheat field and I uh, glued some uh, 3D printed walls uh, down uh, around it uh, with the hot glue gun. The mat was not glued down as I wanted to be removable to place troops there. Uh, the farm, uh, I glued down all the buildings and walls here too uh, and created kind of a small hamlet or homestead here uh, with a smithy and a little house and uh, the gaps between the walls uh, is a problem so I used some filler here uh, with a brush uh, used some rapid wall filler and using my fingers and a brush I just uh, try to uh, fill the gaps as good as possible here I will cover the gaps with some vegetation later on, moss and stuff growing in the walls, so I'm just trying to hide the seams as good as possible. Uh, but uh, using a brush uh, and my fingers is good enough just to make a... it, it looks a bit like mortar between the rocks. Uh, wipe off the excess and uh, you're good to go. Uh, for the ground I'm using some uh, watered down PVA just spread out with a brush. Uh, just trying to get the right consistency. Uh, I, I got it a little thin at first, so it didn't really stick uh, to the kind of shiny surface of this board. But uh, when I put on the uh, material, uh, it, it turned out pretty good. This is a texture uh, powder for paints. If you want to create textured wall paints, you have this kind of powder uh, that is almost like gravel that you buy in a paint shop. It's really good because it takes paint very well. Um, for the hill, um, I'm using a modeling compound. It's made from toilet paper, a ground up toilet paper and plaster basically. Luke's APS has a great video on how to make that and you can buy this in most hobby stores also. Uh, so uh, this is mixed with water and uh, you have to work fast because it dries in like 30 minutes so just trying to Put this wherever you want to create the earth or dirt and to fill out the cracks between the rocks. It's a lot of fun to do this. Uh, this is where it all starts to take shape and looks like like you want it to. And uh, just putting rocks in there, uh, trying to get them in while it's it's uh, wet uh, and sticking them in. Uh, and yeah, just building up the the surface around the rocks. Uh, it really sells it and it looks great. It, it can be used for anything. I mean, it's, it's such a great material and it's really cheap if you make it yourself. Uh, so I made tons of it for nothing. Uh, also plaster, you can always buy that and hardware stores much cheaper than in hobby shops because it's, uh, it's the same stuff basically. I, I found no difference between this super expensive plaster that you use from, from hobby shops and, and the heavy duty stuff that you buy from hardware store so just get sacks of that and save money putting down rocks here too and trying to push them into the uh, modeling compound it's 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 not easy as it's starting to dry but I always uh, used water down PVA to fix these things afterwards so just be sure to get the PVA glue all over the rocks and gravel so uh, it doesn't uh, fall off later on uh, there's nothing as irritating as, as a piece of the train just getting loose when you start gaming. The forests I wanted to look like they did in the old rule books. They didn't have too much detail. Uh, they were ma mainly just trees on a um, flocked basis, but um, some gravel and uh, stones and rocks uh, I thought was appropriate, and uh, so I just 
pour down PVA glue, scattered a few rocks and some gravel in, in, in like small piles there. Uh, I thought that was enough for this one. Uh, I mean, you can do these as, as detailed as you want, but back in the day it was like mostly green flock, so that had to be enough. The hills are made from three centimeter thick uh, polystyrene sheets. Um, it took a while to decide how thick they were gonna be. Uh, back in the day I used to make them five centimeter and that's way too thick if you look at the pictures from old rule books. I think they're two and a half to three centimeters thick, but uh, I chose three here and uh, I used the baseboards as a guide and I cut them out with a hot wire cutter and then glued them back to the baseboards. Um, you can use the polystyrene by itself, but the baseboard makes them a little bit more sturdy and durable, so I chose to do that. And also it's, it's really, really, really good when you come to the next step here. Because these hills have to have beveled edges. Uh, the stepped hills uh, look a certain way and if they don't, it's not right. It's not Warhammer, it's not Old Hammer. So getting these uh, uh, slopes right is much easier when you have a board uh, glued to them. You use it as a guide and you angle the hot wire cutter and then just uh, cut away at the angle you feel is right. I don't think there's a scientific uh, explanation to exactly how this angle is. Uh, you just have to eyeball it from the books and try to get it right. And uh, it takes a little bit of time but it's, uh, it's rewarding and when you have this hill looking uh, just like it did in the books it's just uh, it's just heaven. So um, cut away and uh, try to get it as even as possible, uh, the angle uh, all across the hill, hill so it's not uh, different uh, on different parts. Um, again I'm using the electrical sander to sand down the edges of the hill so they're not too sharp and then just glue the parts together on the ones you want to have stepped uh, uh, well, areas. Uh, I'm making a different uh, variety of hills, uh, corner hills, uh, edge hills and just uh, hills that you can place in the middle of the board. Uh, since this material is dirt cheap, you just can make as many as you like and uh, make more uh, if you have the storage space, just make as many as you need or more than you need because uh, uh, varying your battlefield is, is important in my book. I painted them green with just normal wall paint. Uh, in res retrospect, I should have uh, chosen a darker hue, but uh, this was the one I thought looked like uh, yeah, goblin green or stuff like that. But it's a bit too light when it dries, so I should have made it a little bit darker. Uh, if you do this, uh, yeah, do that. But just painting them and letting them dry and uh, moving on to the next step. Uh, for the rivers, I glued the bridge in place and uh, again I used some modeling compound to create some river banks. Uh, just using my fingers and uh, creating kind of a slope uh, up into the river and down again. Uh, also, uh, be sure to work uh, methodically and quickly because it dries so fast. So, um, do one area at a time and uh, get that right and then move on to the next one. Uh, just getting the banks nice and uh, uneven. <laughs> you don't want it to look uh, factory made. Uh, so just uh, play some rocks maybe to create kind of a river passing here and uh, some interest uh, along the river banks. Rocks and gravel. Uh, just make sure not to get it in, in the riverbed uh, because you want to paint the water effect there. So just getting this uh, into a nice uh, uh, look and again use some watered down PVA to seal it. Uh, do that really uh, a few times if you have the time because uh, actually I just did it one time and some of these rocks actually uh, fell away when painting and gaming afterwards so just uh, do this step thoroughly and it will be so much sturdier. And that's it for the building phase. In the next video I will show you how I paint and flock everything and uh, hopefully this will turn out into a real old hammer battlefield.